Okay, well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it'll be curious if our numbers grow in an hour. Remember, today was the first time we changed our starting time uh, on your end. It's 4 o'clock again here in Massachusetts, but that's because we went through a uh, clock change over the weekend. We turned our clock uh, back, so it's actually our difference from what it was last week. But uh, I have a commitment, another teaching commitment at 7 o'clock, so that's why I had to uh, keep to the 4 o'clock starting time here. So we'll see if anyone joins us at 5 o'clock out there, but I appreciate you all coming. Hope you had a good weekend. Hope you enjoyed Halloween, if that's a uh, custom that's celebrated much in Hawaii or Alaska. I'm still stuck with uh, Halloween candy here, so if you ever come to Boston, give you some leftover candy. But anyway, uh, let's get back to what we're going to be doing today. Uh, remember, last week, we started talking about uh, analysis. Actually, we started talking about two weeks ago, and last week, we started talking about regression models. And that's what I want to continue today, so we'll get the point of working. I want to talk about, again, statistical analysis. Again, we're going to be talking about logistic regression. And now we're going to try to go into a little bit more detail. And in particular, I'm going to try to give you some idea of where the numbers are coming from look at a, the output of a logistic regression model. And uh, But before I go any further, if um, um, make sure you can hear me okay. If you're having any trouble, just send a chat in to Aaron. But I'm assuming I'm coming through all right. So today I'm going to be talking about maximum likelihood estimation as the way the um, computer program comes up with numbers to fit a particular model to a data set. Do that by using two examples we talked about last week. Um, remember, we we're using data from the Framingham Heart Study, looking at the relationship between the gender of an individual. We used the verbal called male, which was coded as one if you are a male and zero if you are a female. We we're looking at an outcome which was called new CHD, which was an indication of whether a person developed coronary heart disease during 18 years of follow-up in the Framingham Heart Study. Anybody who developed heart disease was put it as a one, and anybody who didn't develop heart disease was put it as a zero. And then last week, we looked at this table where the risk factor of interest, gender, male versus females, were the two rows. The top row of this table are the people who male is equal to one. Those are the, the men in that study. Bottom row is the females, male equals zero. The first column of this table is whether a person developed coronary heart disease. First column meant yes, second column meant no. Like we mentioned last week, this study had 643 men, of which 164 of them developed coronary heart disease follow-up. That was a proportion of 25%. We could say that on average, males had a risk of developing heart disease. That was 25.5% uh, during the 18 years of follow-up. Compared to the females, of which there were 720 of them, of which 140 of them developed heart disease, and as we talked about last week, we could use those data and do a test of significant and find there was a significant difference in those two risks. It's in a chi-squared test. Or we could measure associations between gender and uh, the outcome. If we use the odds ratio, we get an odds ratio of 2, with the confidence that we're going from 1.54 up to 6. All this was obtained from a 2 by 2 table. And if you're seeing the same screen I'm seeing, you're seeing these little Fs all along the line here. This is just um, uh, a formatting problem with SAS. Anytime you see an F, think of that as a hyphen. So this should be a straight line here. You can see this on a couple of other slides also. Well, that's what we, we would see if you analyze this data as a two-by-two two table. Then last week, we went a, a, a step further. We said, let's do the same analysis with the logistic regression model. Let's model the risk that a person develops coronary heart disease, conditioning on whether you're a male or a female. So let's look at that risk, P, the risk of developing heart disease for a male and the risk of developing heart disease from a female by fitting a model that says, if we take your risk and divide by 1 minus that number, that's the odds of developing heart disease. We take the log of that number, the natural log, and say the logistic regression model defines a person's log odds of developing coronary heart disease 
is equal to some number b0 plus some number b1 times your gender status. One again for a male and zero for a female. Last week, we looked at what would happen if we fit that model to that two by two table. We had a lot of numbers, and we'll look at some of these numbers today. And one of the numbers was a test of significance, a global null hypothesis. It says all the risk factors in your model have no effect on your outcome. So the coefficient of male in this case would equal zero. And if we looked at the score test built around this model, we get the same value we saw from the chi-squared test from that two by two table, the same p-value. You also see there are two other tests being listed here, a likelihood ratio test and a wall test. We'll talk about these two other tests today as we go through this example. Then SAS would give you the fitted model, the estimate for the B0 term, minus 1.7789. Estimate for the B1 term, point zero, excuse me, 0 0.7070. And last week we mentioned that this number, 0 0.7070, is an estimate for the log odds ratio. And if you take that number and exponentiate it, raise e to that number, we get the estimate for the odds ratio, 2.02 .02 that we saw from the 2 by 2 table. If we build a confidence interval around that log odds ratio and then transform it back to the original odds ratio scale, we get the same confidence interval we have for the 2 by 2 table. So one of the messages we, we concluded last week was that you could analyze data from a 2 by 2 table either by calculating odds ratios by hand, doing chi-squared tests from that 2 by 2 table, or by fitting a logistic regression model, looking at the coefficient of the regression model, turning it into an odds ratio, you get the same number as we had from the 2 by 2 table. We would get the same confidence interval we had from the 2 by 2 table. And the previous slide showed that the score test from that logistic regression model was the same as the chi-squared test of association from that 2 by 2 table. So nothing was gained, nothing was lost. We fit a model for that 2 by 2 table. And now let's talk about where these numbers come from, and what some of these other numbers in this printout means. And to do that, I want to talk about the fitting method, how SAS and other software packages fit a model to a data set, how they come up with estimates for B0, estimates for B1, as in that previous model. To think about that, either you can do it if you want in, in real time, or you can do an exercise in your mind. Let's imagine you had a coin. This is a quarter. Um, on one side of the quarter is a picture of George Washington. The other side of the quarter is a picture of something from a state. Uh, this happens to be a quarter that but the back side of it is showing the state of Rhode Island, which actually is in my home state. It's a picture of a sailboat uh, with a bridge in the background. It's the bridge that's connecting the island of Newport, where I grew up, to the rest of the state of Rhode Island. Um, so in some sense, Rhode Island is very similar to Hawaii. We have islands, we have sailboats. It's just that our temperature in Rhode Island today is probably 40 degrees colder than the temperature you have in Hawaii, and it's going to become much colder in the following months. Now, typically in the States, if you were going to a, say, a football game or a basketball or a uh, soccer game, where they had to decide which team would have the ball first to when the game is started, typically what they do is they flip a coin. The coin comes up heads, one team will get the ball, the coin comes up tails, the other team will get the ball. So let's suppose you had a coin that you wanted to use to decide how a game is going to begin, which team would, would, we, would have possession of the, of the soccer ball or the football at the beginning of the game. And you're going to flip this coin. You want to convince yourself it's a fair coin. So let's suppose we wanted to estimate the probability that if you flip this coin, we want to estimate the probability that the coin will fall with the head side showing up. So what we want to do is estimate the probability, P, that this coin would show a head if I flip it. The way we're going to estimate that is we're going to do a study. We're going to flip this coin 10 times. So if you have a coin, you can flip it, or if you, in your mind, you can flip it. When I was doing this the other day, I flipped it 10 times and got the following results. So this is our data.